go ahead and get started here. This is actually a uh, faux concept uh, with marbling, uh, faux, F-A-U-X. And what we're going to do is uh, just apply the uh, basics of the uh, marbling principles uh, towards uh, this actual uh, piece of furniture here. Now you can go to a, a secondhand store, Goodwill, uh, used furniture store, whatever, but uh, you will find a, a gold mine um, and doing a lot of different things if you know how to do this trick, but you got to stay within the uh, uh, boundaries of not getting too busy and uh, keep continuity, use the right colors and so on. So what I've done here so far is just base coated this white, nothing fancy. Uh, this is uh, really just for a uh, demo in my classes and to show everybody how to marble. But uh, the more scroll work that I've noticed a piece of furniture has, uh, the better it looks also with the uh, believability. This is pretty much a Victorian type of a uh, table, but again, uh, it will actually pull off the uh, texture uh, pretty nicely. We'll talk about the uh, clear coating and what you would use um, if you desire one, uh, but when we're done, this definitely needs to be sealed. So let's go ahead and talk about the colors and we'll move on here. What I'm going to do here is put some uh, Createx white on this uh, paper plate here, maybe about that much. And we kind of need to go back to the uh, cobblestone concept where we were coming in with maybe one, let's see where one drop of black gets us. You can see that gets dark pretty quick there. And I'll mix that up real good. We'll go to one more drop. I'm doing this as kind of a, a visual exercise to show you the uh, smoky gray concept that uh, we need to go to. So this will pretty much be our foundation to set up the uh, marble veins, um, you know, of the pattern, and then basically uh, come in darker if we need to. But uh, hopefully we learned on the uh, cobblestone video that uh, when you apply this intensity of a tone with an airbrush, uh, it gets very, very dark uh, really quick. So the whole point here is that you definitely don't want to use uh, black uh, right out of the bottle through your airbrush because uh, it will be way too much and look really, really cheesy. And we want to keep the uh, organic tone of this uh, marble pattern uh, to make it look as realistic as possible. Okay, so I want to pull something else into the uh, video here real quick. This is a uh, marble uh, palette. It's a little laminated swatch palette that a student gave me about five years ago, but it's came in real handy um, just to kind of show people all the uh, different types of uh, marbling that you can actually do. Now, I always narrate these uh, to my students and I tell them to be real careful because some of them uh, you may not be able to uh, pull off with an airbrush. I'll go through these uh, slowly, but um, these top maybe six or seven here, the real simple veiny kind of ice cream looking uh, marble patterns are the ones that we want to kind of get in and out with the airbrush, nail down, and uh, get paid. So when I go through these, uh, you can see that number one, they definitely all have a name here, and uh, I cannot pronounce these. I really don't know how many types of marble there are in the world, but uh, these come in real handy. They're laminated, and I always tell my students that uh, with what we're trying to do, get in and out and make our money and uh, hopefully have some fun or maybe do this for your mother uh, on her dresser. There's certain types that you will not be able to pull off with an airbrush that will just look um, silly if you even uh, think about doing it. So again, I try to stay with the top seven here. They're pretty simple, airy, kind of wishbony and veiny. I mean, you can try to experiment with some of these, um, but let's try to have some type of a technique that we can get in and out and uh, be convincing as possible. So um, you can see as I flip through these, again, they all have a name and they all get uh, really uh, complex. Uh, this one has kind of a wood grainy type tone to it. Uh, and I'm not even gonna try to uh, pronounce that. So as you cruise along here, you can see they really get um, faux-ish. And again, uh, we're talking about a faux concept here. This is one that I definitely don't think I would try to do. It's way too intense. Uh, maybe if I uh, tried to throw battery acid around or something, but uh, get something like this. And I'm sure everybody's sitting there saying, where would I uh, get something like this if I don't know a uh, marble guy? But basically what you can do is go to Lowe's or Menards. Uh, there's a real intense one there. 
Um, that one I might be able to pull off with an airbrush if I want to take the time to do so. But go to your uh, hardware store and they have little marble samples. Um, take as many as you want, knock on wood, I mean don't get in trouble, but uh, get a hole punch and uh, have something to show people. Make you a little uh, portable uh, key ring. And I think the ones at the stores are laminated, um, but they're pretty sturdy. So uh, again, if you know someone that uh, does marbling, uh, you could probably buy something like this from them. But these right here are the ones that I would definitely not touch. Uh, some of these really, really uh, intricate ones. Unless you guys know uh, some more tricks that I do not. I would not touch that one. So let's go ahead and go on to the actual composition. Uh, moving on to this coffee table. And uh, we'll go to the next step here. Okay, now moving on here, let's go ahead and go back to the actual uh, preparation of this particular table. Uh, this was nothing fancy. This is pretty much just for a demo. Um, if you are a uh, furniture restoring type of uh, person, then go ahead and uh, strip it all down and uh, basically uh, restore the table or whatever type of furniture. Um, it's really up to you. Uh, it's always an advantage if the object, and again, this could be a, a cabinet and so on, uh, but if it's already white, uh, then this is going to be an easier process here. Uh, so the actual uh, preparation is really up to you if you want to do the furniture stripper thing and then use some uh, adhesion promoter uh, which is the uh, Bulldog adhesion promoter you can uh, buy it at Walmart or so on uh, that's actually going to be a good idea it will help your uh, base coat stick if you want to use a uh, latex white base coat like I did on this one uh, that Bulldog adhesion promoter and there's a lot of other kinds of adhesion promoters are good for leather signs, furniture, and so on. You also want to keep in mind that this marble pattern that I'm doing uh, on this uh, coffee table applies towards a, a signage concept, uh, a motorcycle helmet, a gas tank, and so on. Uh, I say that every single video I do uh, when we get into the uh, textural applications of any technique. Uh, it could uh, definitely be marble letters at a uh, beauty salon and I will be putting up uh, other references on this video of other uh, types of uh, furniture that I have marbleized. Okay, let's go ahead and get into some uh, color here. This is Createx White. I'm going to fill the uh, color cap about maybe 75% full there. And again, two to three drops of black. One, two, three. And we'll uh, stir this up real good here. And we'll go to about a gray tone, about like that. I said in all my movies that you want to use future floor wax. It will actually uh, smooth out your paint and uh, melt any uh, inconsistencies that are uh, in the uh, Createx black and white. Createx has a really bad reputation for uh, their black and white paint lines to not flow very well. That's why people go to Aquaflow or whatever. So I'm just going to smoke out the uh, edge of this coffee table. What's cool about an airbrush is that when you have this uh, scroll work in the uh, wood where this is carved, an airbrush has a really nice little look to it uh, which picks up a uh, tainted, burnt, oxidized, uh, distressed type of look even if you're using other colors. So that could uh, definitely come in handy towards a uh, uh, granite look if I want to take a, a toothbrush and uh, stipple all over this. Let's just go around the edge here. I think it's very important that you do not cry long back and forth. I know everybody gets sick of hearing me say that, but you definitely don't want to be waving this airbrush back and forth. What's going on? And the whole reason, again, if I've not explained it enough for the whole Krylon thing, is that when you're basically atomizing and spraying paint, you're spraying dust, we all know that. But when you're waving the airbrush back and forth like that, those dust particles are getting trapped by how you are varying the direction, and that's what causes the uh, cheesy patches. I've learned from all the uh, automotive uh, painters that I've had in my class so that you, when you're painting cars and using HVLP guns, 
uh, you want to be as robotic as possible. That's the nature of the game here. Now we're going to zoom in here and I'm going to show you how I might actually uh, come in and detail this out a little bit around these edges uh, just to do what I call accenting uh, to give it a, uh, in this case not really burnt, but just some uh, contrast around these edges that are sticking out here. And just basically accent those a little bit. As I came in there and pierced that out, I might just want to fade that out a little bit. I'm being kind of anal retentive here, but I've done this on so many pieces of furniture and uh, different weird convex or uh, spherific even shapes that I know that it pays to kind of uh, frost certain areas out and then just kind of fade them to where they go void. It looks more organic. That's the whole point. So I will do this, this hit and fade concept uh, around the oval here and then go on to the uh, veining. I think you're going to be a, a cheese ball if you really just blast out the whole thing really, really harsh. Uh, again, it will not look as organic. Now that we've brought the eye in here, we have to have some sense of uh, composition with how these veins are going to flow. And we want to try the best we can not to make this look really, really cheesy. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you guys that when you're doing the veins on this marble pattern, you want to basically... Uh, keep everything diagonal at a 45 degree angle and you don't want to do a lot of crisscrossing and cross hatching. Uh, what happens then is after people leave class they go to the bank or the mall and then they go to the restroom and they see marble walls and they run their hands over it and they see all kinds of uh, cross hatching which looks kind of like this. Uh, cross hatching, crisscrossing and so on. Get a close up view of that. So. They may say, well, he's full of crap, um, it, it does all kinds of weird stuff. That is the absolute truth. That's why I showed you guys these marble swatches. So you get a concept and an idea that basically what we're trying to do is have a way to get in and out, impress people, make money, and not spend all day or, you know, on this. So you guys in the future, again, if you want to try some of these, have at it, have a ball. I don't have time to do all these, but um, believe it or not, the simple little things we're going to do on this, just to pull off this pattern, is really one of the best looking convincible uh, marble patterns there are. Predominantly because of the nature and the essence of the airbrush in the first place. It atomizes uh, paint and dust and really comes on uh, and gives this a, a frosty, again very organic, uh, veiny look that you will never ever ever get with a paintbrush and that's why I get all the faux painters in my class. Cruise on here. Number one, I uh, noticed off camera that this actually looks darker than it is in uh, true sunlight. In the studio here, we have uh, a lot of different types of lighting, and they're uh, casting this uh, a lot more uh, in contrast than it actually is. Uh, so the softer or more intense you want to get throughout the whole color palette, that's pretty much up to you. I definitely want to make sure that you know that uh, you do not have to use just black and white. It's the... Uh, way to teach this and the inception of learning airbrush but uh, you can definitely you saw all those different colors you guys can use uh, the siennas the crimsons uh, and so on so just take this technique and apply uh, whatever you want from here on out so now this is actually a victorian shaped coffee table so it's actually going to be pretty easy to pull this off sometimes the shape of the uh, object may negate the whole concept uh, or it may be a little bit more challenging to make a pattern crawl around that object like a sphere or a gas tank or whatever so whatever you're doing I always tell people the word veracross veracross veins if you haven't looked up your uh, pant leg and look at them is probably a good metaphor for how veins crawl they start out they wishbone and then they just kind of veracross around the object so you just got to practice, but what you're not going to have a lot of is a cheesy zebra stripes and a crisscrossing and cross hatching. And again, if you want to try to come up with a technique um, to try to match one of those other types of marble styles, go ahead. But uh, this is still in the uh, pioneering stage, in my opinion, 
and uh, this is just a good start. Okay, we'll test our flow here. And again, what I'm going to do is stay at a uh, 45 degree angle. I'm just going to come in with a wishbone type of shape. Wishbone. It's like a V. No nonsense. And again, I have the uh, black tip with the Aztec, so it's really going to be easy with this. And I always tell people that, believe it or not, I don't even have to really sneak any of these other tricks in just because uh, when you go back to some of those samples that I had, uh, the veining on some types of marble um, isn't even defined or refined. It's really just kind of uh, blurry and wishbony. So you can actually be pretty uh, loose with this and pull off a marble pattern. So uh, I also want to talk about composition. Uh, negative space would be, uh, so far, would be right over here. Uh, you don't want to get too busy with this. You want to let the uh, object or the uh, image breathe a little bit. Save negative space. Uh, and this is a really good exercise for positive and negative space because I came in here and by me doing that, that's the positive area. There's something there. Negative space uh, sometimes is considered to be the marginal uh, part of the uh, process here. But uh, just don't get too busy. Let it breathe and uh, jump around and don't overwork it. And just go ahead and do one the opposite way. When I'm coming in here, I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera so you guys can see. Uh, but when I did this, I had a peripheral view of where I was in comparison to this one right here. It's easy uh, to start crisscrossing these things and they just won't look believable. Uh, you want this to have some flow, have kind of an organic um, you know, flow or continuity to it. Wishbone one, wishbone two, just like that. Now, let's come over here to the side and I'm gonna put a light little wishbone in over here, trying to stay even. Let's put maybe one more over here. You can see how I switched it up a little bit. So if you want to, since I have a really big negative area here, negative space, I can come in here and maybe just put a little streamline vein or wishbone that's a little bit thinner. And we can kind of switch it up like so. Now I promise you, again, by doing something this simple, if I flip this thing over, um, I could just walk away from this. But what we're going to do is come in with our other little trick here. And I promise you guys, you're going to have to practice this, this whole technique. Uh, it's going to take time with the uh, ripped uh, poster board. And, um, you know, if you don't like how your, uh, your veins look, you can just basically take some white, roll over the whole thing, and just keep practicing these. But we're going to come in now with some uh, ripped uh, poster board. And we're going to spray and move some veins to kind of accent what we've already done here. Okay, now we're going to come in. I just took some uh, generic uh, poster board that you get at the grocery store. And I just ripped it in half. But I want to go back to the whole cobblestone thing if you watch that video where uh, when we rip this, we're not going to have a bunch of uh, uh, Charlie Brown t-shirt points in this. You want it to be uh, pretty natural looking. And if you think of uh, any rock or marble pattern that you've seen, you're not going to see a Charlie Brown's t-shirt line, so that would really screw this up. You can see this pretty much uh, does its uh, purpose uh, as far as uh, fits this horizontal uh, flow here. And you got to have, again, patience when you're doing something like this. you got to take your time practice. Uh, let's go back to the actual uh, color. You can see it's not real, real black. Um, it's more of a uh, smoky type gray there. So for all the faux painters that I get in my classes, um, this is actually how big they work. They'll actually take a piece of poster board like this and they'll basically take this and spray it and move it. I definitely don't want to catch the edge of this, so I need to be careful. But you can work lighter to darker when you're doing this. Um, you can put your knuckles under this if you want to, just to kind of subdue this a little bit so it's not so cheesy. What you don't want to do is hold your airbrush right up against the poster board 
and do a real cheesy uh, zebra stripe. I've always told people that uh, control is learned by working bigger to smaller and lighter to darker. So this definitely proves that. So let's go in now and get a little bit darker. I don't want to kill it, but just kind of give that uh, a little indication of a vein. Okay, now we're going to take this. We don't want to be redundant. And rip it again. And after ripping that, you can see I can come in here and then test your flow and really just start setting this thing up. Now here's the cool part about this. Once you come in here and do the edge like so, you can come in and actually start tapering this out. Uh, this takes some control with the airbrush, but it's not a sacrilege to come in here and start veining some of this out. You have to get real, real dark for whatever reason. Let's even say if the uh, photo reference is dark. Uh, try to keep the dark areas over in the corner. That way they're kind of drawn back a little bit. And I can come in here and start kind of feathering some of this out. Uh, the main thing I'm doing right now is just establishing all the soft wishbones and some of the concise veins. Here's a nice little thing you can do also. You can kind of agitate the airbrush a little bit. Then we can come in here. And this time, instead of coming up here and spraying right up against the edge, let me turn this the right way. This time, instead of coming in here and spraying right up against the edge, and let's see how dark we can go with that, without screwing it up. That's getting really, really dark. I don't want to go too far past that. Uh, we can come in here and put our knuckles underneath this and do really subliminal type edges that work in composition. That's pretty much on point. If you look at marble and how it actually uh, kind of fades out and has all these different levels of edges and softness and so on, um, it's pretty convincing. So I might just leave this part alone. And come back with some white and start contrasting some of this later on. Uh, I can also come off to the uh, perimeter here and start smoking some of this in. What you have to do is kind of step back every now and then and look at a different texture, a different pattern, and reassociate uh, how intense and how busy it is. And with it turned around, I can basically reset my mind and uh, try to reassociate the flow and so on. It's kind of a, a left brain, right brain thing. And then I'm going to come in, uh, I can keep reducing my paint as I go. I want this paint as watery and thin as possible when I'm coming in with all these uh, detail uh, type strokes. Uh, again, I cannot warn you enough how uh, Createx black and white are really grainy paints, but they're okay as long as you spray them really, really thin or again add the uh, future floor wax. That's going to annoy me, so I want to make sure that I basically rip some of that out of there so it has more of a 45 degree angle flow. Let's zoom in here. We'll go ahead and come in with some uh, free handy now. I think I'll even water it down even more because I want to get to a point where I'm kind of, kind of cobwebbing out and kind of spidering this out a little bit. When you tilt your airbrush down like this, you're going to get this speckle stuff that's going on. But actually, that's what I was going to do anyway, was come in here with a uh, speckle type of pattern. And I'm just going to do these little spider webby type strokes here. So I'm coming in here now and I'm kind of veracrossing this out a little bit. You can see this gives us some good uh, veiny type of uh, a flow here. You want a combination of all this. You want these edges with the cardboard. You want some random freehand uh, striping here. You want a little bit of speckles. You want a lot of stuff going on. You just want to make sure you keep everything flowing diagonally here. So let's come in here now. I'm going to rip another piece of this. Uh, notice I'm ripping quite a bit because I want to make sure that this is as random. Or I switch it up as much as possible here. I'm going to come in here. And this time what I'm going to do, instead of holding this thing stationary like so, 
is I'm actually going to spray it and move it really, really quickly. And it gives you this kind of random, almost double type edge here, which kind of comes in handy. It's a little bit harder to do it at an angle when you're trying to teach, but uh, I think you can kind of get the point here, kind of spray and move, and so on. Now again, if I want anything really, really crisp, let's go ahead and zoom in here, uh, or really, really dark, I might do that off to the edge, like so. Just don't get too carried away but you can do an indication of a dark area off to the side there. Again, staying at a 45 look all the way across. Everything's flowing the same way. So I can come over here. And I want to show you something again. Look how light this paint is on the actual uh, poster board. But when it saturates to a hard surface, just like on the Electroskull video, it gets pretty dark. And I promise you, again, if you come in here with black, you're going to tear this thing up. So uh, I'm going to come in here and do some free handing. Just kind of set it up a little bit. Okay, we're super duper close now, so you can see uh, when you zoom in, we just want some really, really finite uh, stipple or speckling, if you can catch that. I don't want to diversify this too much. I really want this to be a really subdued type of uh, accenting type of uh, stipple which just helps this. If you get too nutty with the stipple, and I think that's perfect, see if we can go in a little bit more here. Um, if you get too nutty and you get all these big fat speckles, it's going to start looking like concrete. So you want this to be more or less a finite uh, type of uh, stipple pattern. If you look at uh, a lot of different marble types, uh, you really don't see it uh, immediately. Okay, I think I'll smoke a couple other areas in a little bit darker here. Okay, now coming in here, uh, you can see it's getting pretty busy, but I do want to come in and lightning bolt some of these little edges out a little bit. We'll zoom in. I think I'm going to go down the center of this piece, and these are going to be really uh, subliminal. I think I'm going to attack this area here and just bring these over lightly. Uh, you can agitate uh, the airbrush if you want to. But a nice little trick is to actually hold the airbrush to the side, and you'll get this kind of run-on type of line that works out pretty well. So again, this is a soft concept here. Uh, and I guess compositionally, you need to think about just lightning bolts. So you can see how this starts off pretty concise and you can just kind of lightning bolt this out. I think I'll work this area down here now. And bear across these out. Look at the move how I'm holding the airbrush to the side. That's the technique there. You want to hold it to the side. And the next thing I'm going to do is come in with some white now. The white is actually going to be a real cool part of this because it's going to counterbalance all the uh, fuzziness of the uh, black paint here or the uh, smoky gray paint. Okay, and with this white, I'm going to come back in here and smoke out certain areas and put some white freehand vein work in here. Again, notice I'm keeping the airbrush at an angle. And this is where you can get really, really detailed and start coming in here and doing some really, really good accenting. Don't get too wiggly and wavy. It's really easy for people to do that. Um, again, a lightning bolt is a real good thing to do. And I don't know if the camera's picking this up or not, but you're going to get this really cool blue frosty hue. You can be really random when you're doing this. And this really kind of sets off uh, the believability. You can see uh, the titanium shift, if you want to call it by uh, airbrush technical terms. We'll come in from this side. I'm going to turn my rower to the left now. kind of taking the white now and down here I was accenting up here when I'm doing the detail and so on I'm accenting but you can also just kind of 
frost over this. Any little boo-boos, uh, speckles that you don't like that you overdid if you sneezed on this or whatever. Uh, this white can actually be kind of a frost over uh, to do reconstructive surgery. If I want this to fade down a little bit, this kind of white back over it, it actually works out pretty good. Okay, now let's come in with another veining trick. I'm going to come in with this uh, sable paint brush. Uh, the uh, hair can be as long as you want to be on that. I'm just going to take some uh, white Createx uh, paint here and dip it in that. And we'll probably have to zoom in real close on this. This is a trick you learn from the um, all the faux painting videos. Uh, but you better have a uh, paper towel on standby because there is an actual technique to this. What you want to do is I'm going to dip this again in the white paint. And you want to basically come in and let's get some of that off of there. But you want to basically take the paintbrush like so, just from the side and basically just kind of scoot it around like that and just kind of taper it out. And then take your clean paper towel. The whole uh, thing here is to not actually take that paintbrush and dip it and just um, totally make a mess. You want this to look somewhat organic and so on. Then we can take this and kind of, again, I'm using the side of the paintbrush and just lightly feather that out like so. And we can dab it and keep changing the towel when you're dabbing so you're actually taking the paint off the surface. You can take and kind of feather some of this out. Let me get some of the uh, paint off there. You want this to be really light. You can come in here and kind of cobweb some of this out. Um, keep it all flowing one way if you can. You can see you start pulling that out there. These are the finite little strokes that make this work. If you look at marble patterns, there's a lot of this going on. It's really how much you care about the image, you know, how much you're getting paid, and so on. Because sometimes how much you're getting paid, we all know, uh, really represents how much detail you want to put into this. So that actually helps out some of the uh, fuzziness of the airbrush. And when you zoom out, you see that uh, works really well there. And we'll come down here. I don't want to glob it on, but let's just kind of chase this vein here a little bit. Just kind of dab it lightly, and I'm kind of spinning it as I go. A little bit more over here. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Uh, they have techniques called rag rolling and so on. Smash that down. Now here's what's cool about this. You can also come in and start frosting this out with your airbrush. Just to kind of subdue it a little bit. Or kind of give it some flow. Again, I want to re-emphasize that when you're doing this uh, final uh, piercing with these uh, white random uh, no-nonsense strokes, you don't want to overthink this. I think sometimes the more hyper you get and random you get with it, uh, the better you actually pull off the look. Uh, we've been pretty um, tedious so far in keeping our composition, but sometimes uh, coming in with something really loose like this uh, pulls off a better look. Okay, so look what we got cracking here. We got a really uh, believable looking image. Um, if you have areas like this that are too fuzzy, they might need to be counterbalanced. Um, and I guess what I'm talking about is this had, um, I think, a good balance of the paintbrush and the airbrush. This has too much airbrush. So I might want to come in again with my uh, paintbrush rolled in the uh, white paint and just kind of contrast that back out a little bit um, and smash it down. You can be pretty random with marble as long as these things taper. Uh, whether you're doing an edge or whatever you're doing, it could start strong, but it needs to taper back. We need to dabble this down a little bit. Again, push it a little bit, not much though. 
just try and take most of that back off. And that gives me a little bit more definition in that area. Um, you can see the eye actually picks that up from a distance. So now I can go in with my airbrush and refog that. Things need to be defined. Kind of fill that space in like so. You can see that I need more of this over here. I need some of this white webby stuff going on maybe up in here. So that's probably where I'll go next. And if you guys can think of other things to bring in more power to you. This just seems like it kind of gets the job done. I get in and out. And after that I'll take my airbrush, test my flow, and let's bring that down a little bit. kind of blend it out. And you can see how we got all these different nice values that are popping up here. Um, that's what you want. You want all these different layers and nuances and webbing type of patterns uh, to make this look believable. Again, if you get too carried away with the smoky stuff or whatever, the white can definitely be your best friend and calm it down. That's why I tell people when you're doing marbling, it's so hard to screw up because the more you come in and fix things, the more um, semi-transparent things are and you get these kind of believable uh, depth uh, types of uh, patterns that are going on here. I think I'll bring some white in down here a little bit. this white is going to show up uh, better in the darker areas. That's why it's always up to you exactly how dark you want to make things, but it's so easy to get too dark with a black, the color black. It's almost like you're making an X when you're doing this. You see how I'm doing this? You're kind of making an X if you look at that. like so. That's the look we're going for right there, not too black. And some white stipple. It definitely pulls out the pattern there. And let's come in here and do a top view here. You can see how this may look from a customer's perspective. step here this is uh, pretty much the tough part you got to uh, have your peripheral vision turned on and basically if you look at the vein of the uh, top part here of the table you got to have a continuum of a cut uh, I've had people try to get metaphysical on me and tell me that uh, it will go this way or that way or whatever but for the most part you make a decision on if this is uh, different parts of marble that are put together or if it's a conceptually a chiseled uh, piece of marble. I mean, it's really up to you. It gets artsy at that point. But what you're looking to do is have a sense of design with this. So uh, you can see right here, this top vein is going this way. The continuum would be here on the lip. And I'll just do that now. I'll do it extra dark just to kind of show you. And then what we want to try to do is keep that flow going somehow. And this is going to be hard for me because I'm uh, positioning myself at an angle here. But I'm going to turn my roller down a little bit. I think it's probably a good idea to, and again, here's the move, here's the flow, to keep a vertical 
scenario going down here. And I can actually maybe wishbone that out. And it's going to mess with your mind a little bit. It's not going to be perfect, but for the most part, you're going to look at this a lot of different angles. And it's really not going to matter as long as the texture is there. But keep this flowing the best you can. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. And this is probably an important part here to where I come in and I always tell people again that if there is a scroll work in the furniture, uh, you definitely want to attack the edges. So that part, that corner is sticking out as is the bottom part of that leg right there. Those are the areas that I'm going to shade and definitely use little sweeping strokes and I will come in here and just basically smoke out the corners of this table and again I'll come in with my paper kind of spray and move the edges there. You can also take the cardboard and put it on the edge of the lip here but again stay within the, uh, the flow on where the marble is going where it stops and starts. Not too many of those, but you can see how it starts to kind of bring it around a little bit. Uh, this tends to be oversaturated. Uh, I will come back in with some white and calm that down. But I think you get the point here on how you actually have to uh, keep everything flowing. If you get too much crisscrossing, uh, it will just not look uh, authentic. And we'll come in with our sable brush now again. And I will dab this down a little bit. And let's calm this back down. Same process here. I'm just going to dab. Kind of move that around. And I would say always a good idea to squint. I've said that in my other videos. When you squint, you will get a really good positive and negative uh, alert on what is too much. So same thing here. Let's come in here. And these are tapered type strokes. Sit for a second. And dab those out. If you have some paint left on your paintbrush, go ahead and use that. Whatever you do, make sure that you come in and put some finite lines in there too. You have so many opportunities to uh, do whatever style of marble you want. Again, I can come in and lightly web this out, these are little dagger strokes, with the uh, paintbrush. Maybe a little bit up here too, when I'm doing the line work now. See that kind of blends that area in right there, it looks really nice. And some white to frost some of this back out. backing off of this and looking at it um, peripherally, like I said earlier, um, you're going to have to make a decision on what you think works best. This is the best that I can get this to go down this way, but I think it actually flows pretty good. As long as all the uh, legs around the table match this. So um, I have basically went boom and then kept it flowing. And then basically what I'm going to try to do with the leg is um, roll off of this um, as opposed to too much of this because now we're crawling. I mean, just think about how this is in its own uh, form. We're crawling down, down, and then over. So in a nutshell, just make sure that these legs kind of stay in a continuum with the flow here. And cruising along here, I think what I'm going to do is shade dark to light. 
And these are really just a good uh, contrasting part of this to bring the eye in. Uh, it gets pretty mundane as you crawl around the uh, object if you don't have any contrasting features like this. Um, that's just how things are in nature. So another wishbone, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try to keep my continuity and just here's the angle. I'm going to try to stay on that. Let's put a reference point there. And maybe one down here. And again, it's going to be pretty random. You're not going to nail this perfectly because these uh, shapes are twisting and turning. So you start off with something like this, okay? And let's create a wishbone right there. We have a stroke coming around. Let's create a wishbone. I don't want to be totally redundant spatially and put this one exactly like that one. So we'll make this one a little thinner. So we have boom, 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 and let's go down here. And we can just do some no-nonsense wisping down here. I can come in, and again, when I'm shading, I'm attacking the areas that are kind of sticking out at me. Maybe at the bottom here, I'll shade that dark. And put some little wishbones in there too. That kind of sets that up. And we'll start doing some edges here. These can be as intense as you want. I just warn you not to get too dark, but I might do something like that for that area. Smoke this up. Because you want a really good feathery flow when you're doing this. That's probably busy enough for that area. Here we have our reference wishbone there. And again, I think I'm going to rip the point out of this. This is a little bit too jiggy jaggy for me. And again, test your flow on your poster board if you want. You can see if you lightly spray, you get a really, really cool look there. So when you zoom in, you can see that we started off with an edge, but it again fades out. And as long as your airbrush is flowing, pick the tip dry off of it. You can come in here and again do some freehand line work just to kind of switch it up a little bit. And that's getting pretty busy right there. Positive space, negative space is right in here. I think I'll do another edge. And feather that out. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show everybody that that's actually probably way too dominant of a stroke. I don't mind when I over do something because you guys are going to overdo it too. And you probably want to stay within this family down here of uh, subtlety. And we can come back in with the white paintbrush and kind of dab some of that back down. That could be a result of your paints clogging up, your tip dry. But uh, in this case, it was a surge when I did that. So uh, no big deal. I'm just going to come back in and invade that with some white real quick. Now let's just come right back in here with our fresh, clean white and just start crisscrossing right through that. Now earlier I talked about uh, stippling black on there to present uh, an organic effect. You can also stipple white on here. Again, you want it finite as possible so it doesn't look like concrete, but uh, you can see that definitely adds to the uh, overall texture and any of the uh, boring areas that fills it in. Sometimes white will sink on you um, if it's not thick enough and you won't even see what I just did. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. This is white right out of the bottle, uh, the Createx, but uh, if it sinks on you, uh, just come back in and stipple it again. 
This is the fun part because once you start attacking these leg type of areas, it looks very, very believable because they kind of uh, twist and turn on you. So you can see how that definitely helps it. Sponge that back and we'll dab that back. And you can see how that kind of negates that down a little bit. And uh, you can just keep slicing into this and layering it and so on. Okay, and since my white is flowing good, let's go in and do what's called webbing again. Um, I put the uh, future floor wax in my white to make it flow like this. Only an airbrush is going to give you this look. And this may be an area, as opposed to some of the line work, that I did with the paintbrush that's on my finger here that I might uh, actually leave soft. You uh, pretty much just uh, pick and choose your battles with uh, how intense you want to get. Okay, moving on here you can see how we have a really good uh, pattern going here. The uh, white uh, definitely pops that out. Um, I want to talk about the whole pricing concept with this. You can go to any uh, secondhand store and buy a coffee table uh, base coat of white and again if you want to restore it that's pretty much your option but um, when I'm actually doing these in production this may only take me about 40 minutes once you get a basic uh, feel for how uh, the uh, pattern flows and that's why I want everybody to keep it simple um, this may have been sitting in a store for $15 uh, whether it be Goodwill or a secondhand store you can actually take it base coat of white and uh, flip it pretty quickly and maybe sell this for 170 bucks or whatever uh, price you think uh, it needs to have on it. Once you get the uh, trick down, it's pretty much a, a process of production. Um, you can do it pretty much on anything, uh, but it's very effective. We don't need to get too busy. I do not teach anything uh, so far that has not made me money. I want people to be able to take uh, some of these techniques and actually uh, use them. Uh, what a concept, right? And um, actually go out, make money, have fun, and um, try different styles of whatever technique. In this case, you want to uh, do a lot of different colors. But again, marble uh, could be something that's on someone's cabinets. It's a faux concept. And this whole video uh, pretty much exposes a faux, uh, F-A-U-X, concept of painting. Um, it's the first video I've done on furniture, and I hope to do more. But uh, airbrush is still in its pioneering stages. People are not really doing stuff like this. That's why I want to teach it. Um, they're doing skulls and the same stuff over and over and over. Uh, matte finish is going to be your transparent sealer. If you just want to seal this, make it dull, but actually protect the finish. And matte finish is definitely not a yellow, nasty tone uh, when you put it on here. Then you actually have Krylon clear coat. That would fly also. Put as much as you want on there. You should not get that uh, nasty yellow hue from uh, Krylon clear coat. Then you have Krylon triple thick clear coat. Now, that's actually going to be really, really cool because it's going to be even that much more solid and shiny if that's the way you want to go. Automotive clear coats are the most durable and they're really going to give this a uh, marble type of shine like you see at the bank and so on. It's going to be very, very convincing. Uh, getting back to this, again, airbrushes in its pioneering stages. Someone eventually, me or somebody, is going to get up on a Discovery Channel or somewhere and actually do this and then everybody's going to think it's a cool idea. So definitely if you have uh, access to an automotive clear coating system, uh, dust this out and it will definitely uh, make this thing look heavier, shinier, and so on. Do not limit yourself. You can definitely do this on uh, motorcycle tanks, uh, do marble inside of lettering, and so on. Um, whatever you do, just make sure you do not get too loud with the colors. I showed you tons of uh, different types of marble, but again, this one is a real easy one to do, and that's where the money's gonna be made is when you actually get in and do something quickly. So I hope you've learned a little something here. Thanks for watching.